Well, thanks everybody for coming. Really do appreciate it. Hope you're enjoying the uh, the seminar so far. Um, as Pat said, my name is uh, Ira Sharp, and my specialty is in wireless communications. And I would take about I'd like to take about 30 minutes here today and just discuss wireless security issues, but also look at a little bit of some of the wired infrastructure security issues as well. Um, and in going through this, one of the important things to realize is a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about are focusing more around Ethernet security, or security concerns because in general, that's where some of the larger concerns are, although I will address some of the larger wireless security concerns as well. So go ahead and getting started here. To go ahead and get started with this presentation today, first and foremost, we're going to look at uh, some of the wireless standards. And some of the wireless standards are really where some of the big security issues exist. And I'll explain why here in one second. Then we'll look at exactly what you need to be worried about, whether you know it or not, about the security issues that exist in, the, uh, in, in many applications today. We'll look at encryption and authentication over a wireless network to find what's important, what's not important, what's good, and more importantly, what's not good. Because certainly, uh, not every encryption standard is the same. Not everything is equal. And then last but not least, the big takeaway of this entire presentation is what can you do to take back to your facility to make sure you're going to be secure? So that's the, uh, the important part to, to be paying attention to. So networking standards, wireless networking standards, what are they? We've been talking a lot about a whole bunch of them today. Uh, wireless Heart, we had a big three-hour seminar earlier today. Talked about that networking standard. Uh, there's a variety of others out there. Uh, Harry discussed a number of him in his presentation here. I have a few listed up here. These are some of the biggies, uh, some of the ones you probably hear all the time. Probably have them on your, uh, at least two of them there on your, your wireless phone. The Wi Fi and Bluetooth standards, and then of course, Wireless Heart is very popular for the industrial industry. All these things have one thing in common they are a standard. Now, what that means is, Take Wi-Fi, for example. I can deploy a Wi-Fi network in my facility or in my house or, or wherever else. And I can go to the nearest Radio Shack, and I can buy a Wi-Fi-based product, take it home, put the proper information into it, and join my network. So that's a great thing because it has a sense of interoperability. There's different manufacturers' products that can work together, which really, really makes it great for your facility because you're not relying on one particular technology, not rely on one vendor to make things work. Different types of products will work together. It's great. The problem is that because the radio language is known, because you can go to Radio Shack and buy that radio and get it online with your network, it is extremely important to make sure your network is secure. Make sure your information is protected so that the person next door to you that has the Wi-Fi network on and you that have the Wi-Fi network on, you're not crossing paths. You're not listening to their information, and they're, and, you're not, and they're not listening to your information. So this makes security an absolute must in industrial wireless communications, particularly when you're looking at standard-based communications. So what are the things to be worried about? What are the things that can happen in a network or a wireless network um, what type of attacks that can happen. And I classify these in kind of two different categories. These aren't absolute. They can certainly cross over. But these are what I call external attacks. So the, what I define as an external attack is typically this will be an attack on a network that somebody has uh, malicious intent or is actively trying to gain access to information. And it may or may not be inside the facility, but it's definitely somebody that's trying to gain access to information. Eavesdropping. It's a very simple type of attack on a network, and it's basically sitting there listening, thing, listening for information as it goes by. Um, it's the thing that um, encryption typically addresses, as you don't want people to necessarily understand what you're talking about. But you're not actually interjecting any data. You're just kind of listening at exactly what's going on in the network. Active eavesdropping is slightly different. You're still listening at what's going on in the network, but now you're not only listening but you're also interjecting data. And typically, you actually insert yourself in the middle of two conversations. And that's actually the nickname of, the, of this type of attack as man in the middle, where basically one device over here to my left may be talking 
to the device over here on my right, and I'll insert myself in the middle and say, okay, I'm going to receive all this information, then I'm going to repeat it out to the other guy over here. So eventually, if I collect enough information, maybe I can make sense out of exactly what they're saying. Brute force attacks. Uh, maybe you have a, a network that has a username and password. Use that to get onto your network itself. A brute force attack would be Basically, you have some sort of computer system or program or whatever else it may be, and you have a huge dictionary of usernames and passwords. And you just continuously try these various usernames and passwords until you find one that works and you gain access to the network. Denial of service. This is kind of a common one when it comes to wireless communications. Um, it's also becoming more common on, on wired communications. But what this is, is it's basically a flood of information on a network that basically takes a network that would normally be usable and makes it unusable. Because you have a device, and the device can only handle so many packets of information. And if it gets flooded with information, at the end of the day, it, it can't make heads or tails of what you're trying to say. So you're denying service for another entity on the network. So it's another common attack. And last but not least, spoofing, which is basically pretending to be someone you're not. So maybe there's a device in the network that has administrative access, can get access to all kinds of information. Um, and and it's, a, it's a very high level of, uh, high, very high credentials in the network itself. Well, if you spoof yourself and make yourself look like that particular device, well, now you then have access to all that information. So these are all things that definitely things you need to consider. Some of them are, OK, yeah, somebody's going to listen to my information. If I'm a wastewater facility, do I really care if somebody knows how much water I have in my tank? Probably not. But in some applications, if you're worrying about somebody interjecting data, the wastewater facility, by the, or as, a, as the same example, what if you insert yourself in the middle of that conversation, and the tank tells you that it's full, and you replay to the control system that it's empty, and you turn on that pump? Well all of a sudden you have a problem because now you have a tank that's overflowing. So it's really important that the information that's flowing over your network is secure and is uh, proper. So not all security risks are external. Not all security risks are intentional. Some security risks just happen. Malware, worms, viruses, all these things are in the news all the time. Um, I don't know about you, but I get emails about these things all the time. And they're very real, and they can attack all types of things. And previously, these things were probably primarily designed for IT-based systems. Um, but certainly, they're making their way down to control systems. There's been some recent re 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 released uh, viruses that specifically target various types of control systems. So you need to protect yourself from them. And a lot of times, the viruses that get on the network or the malware that gets on the networks isn't because somebody purposely put it there. It's because somebody took a thumb drive, plugged it into their computer at their house. They were doing some things. They take the thumb drive out, and then they go and they plug it into an industrial PC at the office. And now that virus can spread throughout your entire network. So it's something you need to look at. It's something you need to be concerned about. It's something you need to take uh, active action to correct. Unauthorized access or accidental access um, to equipment. So unauthorized access is pretty self-explanatory. You know, you don't have access to the equipment, but you have the username and password so you can log into it, possibly make some changes. Accidental access, I don't know if you've ever done this, but if you're dealing with an Ethernet network and you're going to turn on something and you assign it an IP address, 192.168.1.10, and you go and you plug it into the network, and then all of a sudden you go to that address, and it's not the device you just put on the network because that was a duplicate address on the network, and you accidentally are accessing another piece of equipment. It happens all the time. So it's certainly something you need to be concerned about um, when it comes to security. So what do these network risks mean to you? They're more than just out there to scare you. They have very real um, consequences. First and foremost, loss of production. This is time and money. If you put a device on the network that has a duplicate IP address of something else and your network isn't capable of handling that, well, that other piece of machinery may shut down. And if that other piece of machinery is a drive that's running a, a major part of your facility, maybe that drive will stop and cause loss of time and loss of money. So it's very important to make sure things are, are working all right. Uh, damage, the, uh, damage to health and in the environment. The wastewater facility that I provided. So you're getting information in, you provide false information out, and all of a sudden you, you make a, 
uh, an incorrect reading back to the SCADA system, and you could cause an improper reaction that could have major consequences to the environment or health. Loss of intellectual property, loss of compliances with, or loss of compliance with various organizations, and last but not least, um, damage the corporate image. You know, this is a very big thing. I mean, there's a lot of big corporations out there that, you know, that's really what they want to do is protect their name. That's, that's what they're selling. I mean, yeah, they have a product, but really it's the name behind the product that, that gets it to the market. So you have to really protect that. You don't want yourself labeled as someone that's really damaging the environment or really damaging someone's health. So all very important reasons that you need to be concerned about industrial networking security. This is very real, and this isn't new, um, although it's definitely increasing. Hacks, attacks, broadcasts, storms, they happen every day all over the place. And it's not just an IT problem anymore. It's certainly made its way down to, uh, to, to a control system level. Interconnectedness has a lot of advantages, um, but certain security concerns must be addressed. Interconnectedness basically means that connecting the plant network to the IT network. There's a lot of advantages with that because you get the leverage of the IT network and all the security mechanisms that are there. But you also have to make sure that proper security assessments are being done on that network so they don't have vulnerable spots into their network that could possibly tunnel to your control system. So it's really important that if you're going to be connecting the IT network and the plant network together, that there are mechanisms in place that separate the traffic. Sophistication of attacks are on the rise while the expertise of performing these attacks is dramatically on the drop. So this is a little Google search here. You can see a little screenshot here. October of 2009, if you Google hacking SCADA, uh, you see a result of 791,000 available pages you can view. So a decent number. If you Googled hacking SCADA in February of 2010, or 2010 it's 1.6 million. So if you think the information isn't available, just go to Google and Google it. There is a lot of information out there available on basically attacking networks, and not just IT networks, hacking SCADA networks, hacking industrial networks. It's very real and something we definitely need to address. Attacks are happening every day. Uh, here's, a, here's a real life example. There was an employee that was working for an Australian wastewater facility. Um, and basically, he was fired for whatever reason, and he connected to an unsecure wireless access point in this wastewater facility. He helped design the SCADA system that they are using, so he actually triggered some of the pumps and released 264,000 gallons of uh, sewage into the rivers. It took, or he did this over three weeks, and as you can see there, the first 2.5 weeks, nobody even knew. And then in the last half week, they finally figured it out, corrected the system, and so on. But the key thing here is, it wasn't the fact that they had a network. It wasn't the fact that there was a wireless network. It was the fact was that it was an unsecure network. Had this been a secure network, and, they had, and, and the proper procedures had been followed, this wouldn't have been able to happen. So certainly something you need to be concerned with, something that's happening in the industrial world every day. So it's time to protect your facility. And to protect your facility, you need to know a couple basic concepts. And uh, in the wireless world, there are two major elements of security that you need to be concerned with, encryption and authentication. And they do different things, but they're very important that you understand both of them and you use them both very wisely. Encryption basically takes information that you normally would send a, um, through a, a data cable and makes it unreadable as you go over the air. So it takes readable text and makes it unreadable. Um, so therefore, if someone's eavesdropping, they're not going to be able to make sense of your information. Authentication basically defines, are the people on my network actually supposed to be there? Are you are who you say you are? Right? Are you supposed to be on this network or not? If you're not, get out. If you are, okay. You can communicate at this level. So you don't give everybody um, basically God access. You, you can access the network at this level. Very important. And it's really important that you address both layers of this security. So Wi-Fi access points. Almost everybody has a Wi-Fi network at your house. And the question was asked earlier today, is your network secure? And I think a lot of people raised their hand and said, yeah, my network's secure. 
But the question is, how secure is it? If you just enabled security, it doesn't necessarily mean your network is secure. Wi-Fi or 802.11, okay, inside your wireless router at your house or any other Wi-Fi product that you may use in an industrial facility or anywhere else, has several different layers of encryption is what it's called in the product. WEP is the most basic. And it, what, it's, it, it is what comes on by default um, most of the time when the cable company or somebody else comes out and installs the router at your house. WEP stands for wired, wired Equivalency Privacy. And basically, it is not even recognized as a encryption standard by the IEEE anymore. And the reason it isn't is because you can Google how to hack WEP and find various resources on how to do this with little to no networking knowledge at all. And it is known that you can hack this type of network in about one or two minutes or less. So moral of the story is, if you're ever driving around and you really need to send that email and you find somebody that has a WEP encrypted network, you can go ahead and crack their network and send your email. No problem. So, wired equivalency privacy, this WEP, is not a suitable form of encryption for your Wi-Fi network. If you go through that drop-down, the next one you always see is WPA. It stands for Wi-Fi Protected Access. Okay? This is a really big upgrade from the previous version. It's actually based on the exact same security standards, although there's some key rotations and some other things that happen behind the scenes that make it much more secure. And uh, there's really two different uh, variants here. You can get it with TKIP, TKIP um, encryption or AES encryption. TKIP is very secure, uh, can be hacked, but it's, 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 it's pretty secure. AES is almost unpenetrable. But uh, it is known that you can hack WPA encrypted networks, uh, so it is not the highest level of security that is currently available. The highest level of security that's currently available for a Wi-Fi access point or a Wi-Fi network is something called WPA2, which is the next evolution of the previous version, obviously. And this solely uses AES encryption. So when we talked about wireless heart earlier, Ed talked about it using AES 128-bit encryption. That is the exact same encryption standard that's used in WPA2. And uh, there's two different variants here. You can use it in PSK, which stands for pre-shared key which is probably what most of us do, where you have to type in your, your password to get on your Wi-Fi network. There is also an enterprise level of that where it uses certificates. So you don't actually type in a password. You have a little certificate that sits on your computer that IT gave you, and that will authenticate with their servers. Bottom line, though, is if you are going to have a Wi-Fi certified product, you must support WPA2 because the other two standards are kind of being retired. This is the latest and greatest security that's currently available for a a 802.11 or a Wi-Fi network. In this AES encryption, when you look at a lot of wireless standards or wireless communication systems that are out there, that is the thing that you're going to want to look for. That is the latest and greatest encryption that's available for our industrial type of products or really consumer-based products as well. So. Does it take to grab that with the Googling this? <laughs> with the Googling it? It's, it's considered unhackable at this point, but you know, new, new things are happening every day. But there's no known hack for WPA2 today. Emphasize today. What is it? November 4th, 5th, 2010. Uh, wireless security is important. However, the same principles um, that you usually implement for a wired Ethernet network also apply to a wireless network. So you need to secure the entire network. You could have the most secure wireless network in the world. But if you leave a switch that's open to the outside world and anybody can come in and plug in and gain access to the rest of the network, you're still very vulnerable. So you need to make sure you're securing both the physical and the wireless side of your network. So it's time to take control of the situation. What can you do? Yes, in general, um, networking security, when you're talking about industrial, in the industrial world, typically people say, ah, that's the IT job. I don't have to worry about it. But bottom line is, it can become very important to you very quickly if all of a sudden a piece of your machinery shuts down or you're getting bad information data or bad data back into your control system. So it's really important that you have that conversation and you understand who's managing what part of the network. Um, everyone has a role to play. So yes, IT may have a role to play, but yes, you should also be involved because you have to make sure that you know who's responsible for what part of the network. Somebody needs to take the initiative to get things done here. and. Uh, and basically, um, 
in many situations, IT has a bad relationship with the plant guys. It may not be in your facility, but it's certainly something that, that goes out there because usually the plant guy wants to get something done really quick, and the IT guy wants to make sure everything's extremely secure and be very methodical in how they deploy systems. And then you butt heads, and the plant guy goes and does it anyways. And you, then you have to really worry about how you're going to get the network up and running and keep it secure. So. WPA2, according to that slide, I think was November or March of March 13th of 2006. Isn't there a lot of devices out there that don't have WPA2 capabilities that you have to take your network down? Yes. In order to make it work? Yes. Absolutely. So it is the lowest common denominator type of thing. So if you have a access point, a lot of access points will allow you to allow separate levels of access. So you could have a WPA and a WPA2 level. Um, so you can allow both encryption types. But in general, yes, you have to be able to support that throughout the entire network. So what can you do here? You need to defend your network. And how are you going to do that? Well, you need to use a firewall. And a firewall can limit the traffic both in and out of your network. Um, it allows certain things in, certain things out. And keeps out the rest of the, the riffraff. You need to segment your network from IT network to make sure that a possible virus or other things that are happening over there will not make it into your control system and vice versa. You, know, you don't want to inter interject any bad data into the IT network as well. Uh, you need to protect against common attacks such as broadcast storms, spoofing, denial of service. Um, and if IT insists on taking control of the entire network, that's perfectly fine. But make sure you know when the last security audit was done and what was done to actually look at that. Okay, what are my ways in? What are my ways out? If people are making remote access into your network, how are they making that remote access into that network? Do they just log on to a website? Or do they have to go through a secure VPN tunnel? What's the security that's used in that VPN tunnel? These are the questions that need to be asked to make sure that the data coming in and out of your network is very secure. And you're not going to have basically open ports to possibly the internet or other areas. Control who has access. Not everybody in the facility needs to have the same level of access. Um, also, if somebody leaves the company, make sure there's a mechanism in place to actually um, remove their access. So you don't want to leave a password available in the system after a, a personnel has left the company willingly or um, has been fired. You want to make sure that their, their credentials are removed from the system so they can't access it later on. Uh, and basically, uh, make sure shared passwords are changed. Uh, if you use the same password, universal password for everybody, you're going to make it very vulnerable for brute force types attacks. Use common sense, um, yeah, changing the passwords. And uh, be careful what you download and what's, what's going on in the net. And it's not just that computer that's doing that downloading. Like I said, you have another computer that's doing a download. You use the thumb drive in that computer. And then you take it and you plug it into another computer. Things can pass on that way. Defense in depth. This is a really important strategy as one of the very common methods of, of security for networks in general is to put up one big, huge firewall. So it's basically the corporate network, and then you have the internet. And what you put between there is a router and a big firewall. And that's great. But the only problem with doing that is if somebody does find a hole, they're in everywhere. They all of a sudden have God access to your network now. So if you do defense in depth, where you have different layers of security, um, maybe you do, yes, have that definite wall that defines you from the internet. But then within there, you have a block for your plant network. And then at each level of your plant network, or maybe you have a PLC, maybe you have a separate firewall, or at least a separate entity to, to, to limit the flow. So if someone does come in with a thumb drive to the IT network and put, put something into the computer that creates a broadcast storm, if you have a firewall in place at your PLC, you'll block all that traffic from getting to the PLC that won't cause it to go down. And the same is true with the wireless network. Um, if you only have this big firewall here, and then you have a wireless network that has open access, well, you're going to be able to go right around the wall. So you have, to be able, you have to make sure that you're using the proper security in the proper places. And defense in depth is extremely important, in my opinion, particularly for industrial control systems. 
because it's not like you can stand having a piece of machinery go down like you could have a PC going down. The environments are different between an industrial control facility and an IT facility. So we'll wrap up here. It's time to take the initiative. You know, look at the security, um, ask the questions, know what's going on, and how you're being protected, particularly if you're using Ethernet. Focused on Ethernet here, but certainly this, this applies to other types of systems as well. It's just most uh, relevant to Ethernet communications. Ensure you're using the proper wireless encryption and authentication for your network. Uh, control network access, that's the traffic actually going in and out of your network, the levels of access and the passwords being utilized. And remember, defense in depth. Probably the most important concept of this, uh, this, this presentation here.